The S cycle is an interesting part of the iPhone buying experience. Each year, Apple introduces new iPhones, but only half of them are redesigns. The other half are reimaginings, improved takes on tried and true existing hardware. These takes are never the most exciting phones, but they're always the ones worth buying. I'm Hayato Huseman with Pocket Now, and normally my favorite S model comes backed by Elon Musk, but after this week, I might be willing to make an exception. You guessed it, this is our video review of the iPhone 6S. From the outside, the iPhone 6S looks completely identical to last year's iPhone 6, save for the new S callout on the back. It sports the same unibody frame, this time upgraded to 7000 grade aluminum for a slightly grippier feel in hand and better resistance to bending, and we still have those unsightly antenna bands. There's also the same 4.7 inch IPS display, with the same odd 1334 by 750 resolution coming in at 326 pixels per inch and the same big top and bottom bezels surrounding the screen giving way to only about a 65% screen to body ratio. That's not terrible, but with phones like the Moto X Pure Edition trimming bezels to reach upwards of 75%, Apple probably could have either crammed in a bigger display or made a physically smaller device. Well, they could've, if it weren't for the new additions of the 3D Touch and Taptic Feedback engines inside. We'll come back to those in just a second, but they do make the iPhone 6S a tad thicker and heavier than last year's model, though that's not necessarily a bad thing since the added weight makes the iPhone feel sturdier than before. Being an S model, we weren't expecting any kinds of major changes to the aesthetic design, but we were counting on upgraded internals, and Apple definitely delivered this year. The new A9 chipset may only be dual-core on the surface, but combined with the 6-core GPU, it's one of the best-performing SoCs you'll find, and that shows in benchmarks and real-world performance alike. The iPhone 6S flies through anything you throw at it, and you can switch between more apps at once than ever thanks to the 2GB of RAM inside, double what we'd seen before. The only thing standing in your way of truly taking advantage of the iPhone's hardware is the 16GB of internal storage on the baseline model. Seriously, before my first 24 hours with the phone were up, I had already burned through all but a gigabyte and a half of space, and Apple still doesn't match your iCloud storage to your phone's capacity. Spend the extra money and just buy a 64 gigabyte phone. Trust us. No matter what storage size you get though, the iPhone 6S sports a new version of Touch ID built into the home button, and it is stupid fast. So fast that you can't even view your notifications without unlocking the phone. I never thought that being too fast could be a problem, and it almost is here, but it makes using your phone so effortless that you forget you even have a security code until someone else tries to get in, which, if you ask me, is a huge victory. The button can also be used as a quick shortcut to all kinds of features, from opening Siri with a press and hold, to launching Apple Pay with a double click on the lock screen, to switching apps with a double click anywhere else. Say what you will about physical home buttons, but Apple's made it loud and clear that this is a quintessential part of the iPhone experience, and it's not going anywhere. Another essential part of the iPhone 6S is 3D Touch. This is a whole new method of input powered by a physical sensor within the device that registers different levels of pressure applied to the screen. It's hard to understand its practical use until you try it for yourself, but once you do, you realize that the potential here is tremendous. If you 3D touch on a home screen icon, a contextual menu will pop up, like a right click on a computer, giving quick shortcuts to the different functions of that app. 3D touch on a link in Safari to preview the corresponding web page, or on the subject line of an email to preview the body. 3D touch on a live photo in your gallery to animate it, then set it as a lock screen wallpaper, which you can then, you guessed it, 3D touch to animate again. A lot of people have compared this feature to the long press we've had for years in pretty much every smartphone, but I really can't stress that right-click analogy enough. This is something that almost no other phone can do, and I'd really like to see it implemented more in the months ahead. The iPhone 6S and its larger sibling, the 6S Plus, are the first phones to ship with iOS 9 running out of the box. We've been running the software in its beta form for a few months now, but for everyone else, this means an assortment of new features that add layers of both convenience and confusion. The system font has seen a makeover, and there's a new screen to the left of the main home screens, in the style of Google Now or HTC's Blink Feed, that displays news stories along with some of your frequent apps and contacts. 
Those frequent apps also show up in the spotlight search bar now, and contacts have been omitted from the multitasking screen, which now bears a card style design. Looking past the various design tweaks, a lot of thoughtful changes have been made to the way you navigate the phone. One of my favorites is the button that takes you back to the previous app when you're sidetracked by in-app links or notifications, though I wish this button could be at the bottom of the screen instead of all the way in the top left corner. Speaking of notifications, they're now organized on a timeline by default versus the per app sorting from before, which makes it so much easier to clear out a whole day's worth of notifications all at once. I really wish that clearing out those notifications also dismissed the badge icons on the home screen though, a redundancy that's plagued iOS for years, but maybe next year. Still, as expected, this is the best version of Apple's iOS yet. Also the best that it's ever been is the iPhone 6S's camera. It's taken a bump up from 8 to 12 megapixels, and it's learned a few new tricks on the software side too. Apple was really excited to show off live photos, which work together with 3D Touch to create, well, basically a short video. Of course, they don't look at it that way, and you capture live photos the same way you would a static one, but we've seen the same thing done on other phones before from other manufacturers. Still, it's a fun addition to the iPhone, and as mentioned before, you can set these live photos as animated wallpapers, but be careful taking too many of these if you skimp out and buy the 16GB model, which, again, you shouldn't. Live photos take up twice as much storage as a standard shot. Those standard shots look great, by the way. The iPhone has always taken top-notch photos, and the new 12 megapixel sensor on the iPhone 6S is no exception. Photos are full of natural color and detail, and the camera is really good at balancing exposure, even in scenes with multiple light sources. It's weird to say that the iPhone might not have the best camera out there for once. Android OEMs really stepped up their game this year, and phones like the Note 5 and LG G4 give the 6S a run for its money with great optics and a myriad of manual controls, but when it comes to quick point-and-shoot captures, the iPhone still sits on top with the most reliable camera in general. Oh, and the jump in resolution also means 4K video for the first time on an iPhone. Even without OIS, it's smoother, brighter, and crisper than ever before, and you know what, I'll let you be the judge. Check it out. The front-facing camera also saw a pretty major update this year. It's been bumped up to 5 megapixels, and the amount of added detail compared to last year's iPhone is pretty wild. It's still not wide-angle like most of the competition, but paired with the new software Flash, it's the most capable selfie shooter we've seen come out of Cupertino. Even though the iPhone 6S doesn't have as large of a battery as the 6S Plus, or even last year's iPhone 6, endurance is outstanding. The phone always made it through a full day, whether I was streaming YouTube or playing games, and on lighter days when I was just scrolling through Twitter and handling emails, I was able to squeeze nearly two days out of it. I wish I could be just as positive about signal strength, which was good, but not great. Other phones from Samsung and Motorola this year outperformed the iPhone in reception, and moreover, I saw faster speeds on the others too. So what's the verdict? Should you buy the iPhone 6S? Is it worth its top dollar cost? Of course it is. Between the solid design, terrific camera, silky smooth performance, and selection of quality apps, it's no wonder the iPhone is the most popular phone on the market. It's not for everybody, and if you value raw specs, open customization, or hardware amenities like expandable storage or removable batteries, then like always, there are probably better options for you on the Android side of things. But for the layman that doesn't want or need to spend hours tweaking their phone, or for the app maniac that always has to have everything before anyone else, the iPhone 6S is about as good as it gets, just so long as you prefer a smaller form factor. There's a whole lot more detail waiting for you in our full review of the iPhone 6S, so be sure to find that and our matching 6S Plus review at pocketnow.com. You can also find us on social media at pocketnow, and subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already. Until next time, I'm Hayato Huseman on Twitter and IRL, and as always, thanks for watching.